The Dallas Stars have had a chaotic past few days. Goaltender Jake Gottinger has been officially listed out for at least the next week. Scott Wedgwood steps into the number one goaltender position temporarily, and the Stars have to reach into the American Hockey League to find a backup goaltender. All of this on top of the fact that they have a game tonight at home against the Los Angeles Kings and an upcoming three-game road trip. There's a lot to cover. We have a game, a new member of the team. We're going to talk about it all and more on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credentialed member of the Dallas Stars media, coming to you on this Tuesday, November 1st. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener of the show, Thank you for stopping by and for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Help us reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. And with the number we're at now, we very well could hit 1,000 subscribers by Thanksgiving. We can only do that if you hit the subscribe button. It is absolutely free to do so. And we are also free and available on all podcasting platforms if you prefer to listen to the audio version of this show. Uh, free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also find and follow us on social media at Locked on Stars on both Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis for all things Dallas Stars and all things sports in general. But thank you guys for tuning in today. Let's jump right into it because there is a lot to discuss. Uh, it is game day, uh, but this is not your normal game day as there is some news to catch up with. We'll talk about the Los Angeles Kings a little bit later and what the matchup will look like between the Stars and the Kings and what it will take for the Stars to come away from this matchup with two points. But before we get to that, got to talk a little bit about a pretty substantial roster update. We all know Saturday's game against the New York Rangers. Jake Ottinger leaves that game early with some sort of lower body injury. Not a ton of details after the game. Not much of an update on Sunday besides Matei Blumel getting sent back down to the AHL. So then people say, okay, that's making room for some sort of backup goaltender to come up. Uh, and it, a lot of people assumed that that was Anton Hudobin, but it just was not that simple uh, due to some cap reasons. And the, the verdict was still kind of out on whether or not Jake Ottinger would be injured long term would it only be over the weekend would he be able to play on Tuesday night tonight when you guys are hearing this Uh, but it was officially announced Monday morning after practice by Stars general manager Jim Nill that Jake Ottinger is injured with a lower body injury and that he will be re-evaluated in a week and it is unlikely that he will travel on the Stars next road trip after this Tuesday night matchup at home against the Kings the Stars will play Thursday Uh, against the Arizona Coyotes, and they will go on to play the Edmonton Oilers, and then they will play in Winnipeg against the Jets for a three-game road trip. It is stated by Neil that Ottinger will likely stay in Frisco to continue rehabbing and getting back into playing shape. And so this kind of sent the Stars into a scramble to find a suitable backup goaltender for the time being because Scott Wedgwood now is being thrusted into the starting role. Uh, And this is a time where you're thankful to have a guy like Scott Wedgwood, who is an NHL veteran, a guy that, you know, isn't as good as Ottinger, but certainly can come in and play at a high level and put the stars in a position to win. And that's what he's done with his couple of starts so far this season. But you can't just trust that Wedgwood is going to go out there and be healthy. Uh, Of course, knock on wood, Scott Wedgwood stays healthy and is able to play all of these upcoming games and can hold hold things down while we wait for Jake Ottinger to come back. But you have to have some form of backup goalie, whether it's due to tiredness, fatigue, injury. You have to have someone that can come in and back up Wedgwood if needed. And like I said, Anton Hudobin wasn't possible because of cap space reasons. Uh, A big part of that due to uh, Jake Ottinger's contract, Jason Robertson's new contract. You just don't have the cap space to bring up a guy like Anton Hudobin 
from the American Hockey League. So you would have to look elsewhere throughout the Stars minor league system, either the AHL or the ECHL. But the Stars made an announcement Monday afternoon that American Hockey League goalie Matt Murray would be called up and signed to a one-year entry-level contract with the Dallas Stars, signing that ELC probably much earlier than he expected and the Stars probably expected him to be doing. Murray is a 24-year-old from St. Albert, Alberta. He played college hockey at the University of Massachusetts, where he helped them win a national title in 2021. And so far with the Texas Stars, he's been pretty solid. A 2-2 two and two record, including a shutout with a two goals against average and a 9-2-6 save percentage so pretty solid numbers and I think one bonus to having a guy like Murray is he is a little bit older he isn't a particularly young prospect I mean this is a guy who played not just a brief time at UMass I think he played there four or five seasons he has a good amount of competitive hockey under his belt but clearly college hockey and even the American Hockey League is different than that of the NHL but still this is a guy that isn't you know some sort of fresh meat I mean this is an older player a little bit more maturity he's going to be more developed physically uh, and he again he has several competitive games under his belt and has played on some pretty big stages uh, like the aforementioned 2021 national title so this is a guy that I feel like if you're going to be in this situation is a decent backup for Scott Wedgwood and I think the really nice part of it this is that Matt Murray can come up and maybe get the experience of practicing with the National League, National Hockey League team, you know, traveling with them, spending time with them. But there's a chance that he doesn't see the ice at all. There's a chance that maybe he doesn't play uh, or really, you know, have to get thrown into the fire. Uh, because thankfully, with this hopefully only week that Jay Gottinger is out, the schedule is pretty favorable, favorable for the Stars as far as getting rest. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, after this game tonight against the Los Angeles Kings at home, the Stars will hit the road for three games. On November 3rd, they play at Mullet Arena against the Arizona Coyotes. And then on November 5th, they will travel to Edmonton and take on the Oilers. And then on November 8th, uh, they will travel to Winnipeg and play their old friend Rick Bonus and his Winnipeg Jets. And then they won't have another game after that until Friday, uh, November 11th at home against the San Jose Sharks. So no back-to-backs. The games, you know, every game they play has at least one day of rest in between. That Edmonton and Winnipeg game, you have two days of rest in between there. So you're traveling, you're not at home, but you're not playing any back-to-backs. And I think that Arizona game, the Stars are a much better team than the Arizona Coyotes. Hopefully that's a game that they can come out and win. Edmonton, that's going to probably be the toughest test of this road trip. That's a good team, a tough building to play in, but we'll see if the Stars are up for it. And then the Winnipeg Jets, uh, they're going to be looking to get some revenge on the Stars after their first meeting earlier this season, and I'm sure Rick Moan is going to do everything he can in his power uh, to get a win over his former team as well. So definitely not a cakewalk of a road trip, but definitely one that the Stars can try to get some sort of points out of. I think they can get two out of Arizona, and if they can squeak you know, at least one or two out of the next two games, I think that you have to consider that a success given the teams that you're playing and the circumstances surrounding the team with Jake Ottinger likely not playing and let alone even traveling with the team during these matchups. But they're all spaced out. And so in theory, you could start Scott Wedgwood tonight against the Kings and then you could start him the next three games as well on the road and hopefully not have to play Matt Murray at all. He gets the experience of being around the NHL team. He gets to practice with them. That's probably good for his development long term, but hopefully he doesn't have to get put too much to the test uh, during his sh- hopefully short tenure with the Dallas Stars right now. And maybe we can eye a Jake Ottinger return next Friday at home against the San Jose Sharks. I think that that could be a great opportunity for him to come back. The Sharks, one of the worst teams in the league to start the season, a team that doesn't have a ton of offensive firepower and at home in front of the hometown fans. I think that that could be a great opportunity if he's healthy, if he's ready for him to come back. And, and, you know, we just got to hope for the best. I know that this is kind of a, a scary time and worst case scenario for Jake Gottinger, seeing him go down after there's been all of this talk, not just from me, but from several others as well, that this guy has been the best goaltender in the NHL through the early stages of this season. And it's such a shame to see him go down, but it doesn't seem like it's too severe of an injury or something that's going to take too much time away from the game for Jake. 
We just got to believe in Scott Wedgwood. I personally think that he can do just fine. I know that the Stars have lost the games that he started in, but it hasn't necessarily been his fault. I think that he's done very well. He played very well for the Stars when he got traded to them last season. I think he's a great player. I think he's very, you know, set up for success and a guy who's going to be ready to go. He's going to be practicing hard. He's going to be locked in. Uh, and I think if the Stars defense and the Stars offense can deliver on their side of the ice and on their end of the deal, that Wedgwood's going to do everything he can to put them in position to win these next several games. So I'm excited to see what he can do, and I'm excited to see how the rest of this Stars team rallies around Scott Wedgwood to try to get some wins and get some crucial points while their star goaltender is out. It'll be very interesting to see when Jake Ottinger can come back, and we're going to see what the Stars team is made of as they play without one of their cornerstone pieces for the next few games. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will shift our attention to tonight's matchup. The Los Angeles Kings come to Dallas for the first time this season for a matchup with the Stars, and we'll catch up with the Kings and find out what they've been up to early on this season and talk about some of their key players after a quick break. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Simply Safe. If you thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Locked on Stars listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents used Fast Protect technology exclusively from Sim- Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real, so you can get priority police response. Simply Safe is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. They provide HD security cameras for inside and outside your home and smarter ways to detect motion that alert you when a threat is real, and even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system that I would recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. The Dallas Stars are back in action tonight. Thank you again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Please do consider subscribing on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. Leave us a five star rating or review uh, in. Tell us why you like the show on your review. It truly does help us out a ton and always good to hear feedback from the loyal fans and listeners of the show. But let's take a moment now and talk about the visiting team in tonight's game. The Stars looking out to close out this three-game homestand and get a win where they can go 2-1 and one overall on this three-game homestand. The Los Angeles Kings come to town and they're a team that are they're off to a decent start. They haven't been a bad team to start the year, but they certainly have not been one of the great teams to start the season. Uh, I think that they had pretty high expectations placed upon them by many, including myself. I think that this is a playoff team. I think I thought this would be one of the more dangerous teams in the Western Conference and Pacific Division. And while that has been somewhat true, they haven't been quite as deadly as I thought they might be at this point in the year. But I think that they're maybe still kind of putting some pieces together and figuring a few things out. uh, And maybe later on in the season, they'll be much more of a threat. They're kind of in the middle of the pack of the Pacific Division right now. And by the time you're hearing this, they actually will have played a game uh, that took place on Monday night against the St. Louis Blues. Game one of a back-to-back in St. Louis against the Blues. And then now they've traveled to Dallas. But I'm not sure who won. I'm recording this on Monday afternoon, just after five o'clock. So I wasn't going to wait just for that game to end. I knew what I wanted to talk about on today's episode. So you can look it up or maybe you already know who won that game. But that is something to keep in mind that the Kings are coming off of a game played in St. Louis last night. So you have to factor in the travel, the fact that they played another game against another team, another decent team in the St. Louis Blues to start the season. I wasn't personally going to wait up and see what happened to wait to record but you guys can figure out if they won or lost, but still something to take note of. But the Kings as a team, uh, even though they don't have the best record to start the season, they do provide a great amount of firepower to their team. They boast a top five offense in the NHL and goals for actually at the time of recording this, they're second in the NHL and goals for, of course, that could have shifted a little bit after Monday night's contest with the blues, but this is a team that can score goals and score a lot of them on any given night. And so far, they are being led by a name that I was not expecting to see at the top of their point list. And this is one of the better stories of the season 
for this Kings team. The emergence of 23-year-old Gabe Velarde, the 11th overall pick in the 2017 NHL draft. Drafted by the Kings, he has seven goals, four assists, and 11 points total in 10 games played. This, of course, before the St. Louis game. Perhaps he boosted those numbers a little bit last night. Uh, And this has been one of those kind of players that if you look at him and you look at his story, it's been a trust-the-process type situation for him. Uh, This is a guy, like I said, drafted in 2017 by the Kings, 11th overall. So some pretty high expectations placed upon him whenever he joins this Kings organization. And really, this is his first season where he's taken off. He's played some in the NHL, but he really had to find himself and find and develop his game in the American Hockey League. And he has done just that. I would compare him to Ty Delandria on the Stars team, except multiply that times 10 because he's scored seven goals through 10 games so far this season, whereas, you know, Delandria kind of the same way. It took maybe a little bit longer than some people would have liked, but Delandria seems to have now come into his own and is a really solid player. He hasn't scored seven goals like Velarde has, but that's kind of the comparison I have for this season between these two teams. But Velarde, definitely a guy you got to watch out for. He has been scorching hot to start this season for the Kings, and if that isn't scary enough. The Kings have a mix of plenty of other offensive threats, some recurring faces that you're very familiar with with this Kings team, and a few new threats as well. One of those being, of course, Kevin Fiala, who the Kings acquired from the Minnesota Wild this offseason. He has two goals and seven assists so far this season. Anji Kopitar, uh, nine points so far. Adrian Kempe, eight points. Drew Doughty, Sean Dursey, some pretty solid defensemen. This is a very well-rounded roster as far as skaters go, a team that can hurt you in a lot of ways. They can play pretty well defensively. Uh, Not the greatest defensive team, but they certainly can hold their own. And they also can just pound you with the puck. They can pound any goaltender and make your life a nightmare uh, whenever that team is on offense just because they have so many guys that are a threat to score from just about anywhere in the offensive zone. Uh, And they're a scary team, but especially playing at home, this is a team that I think the Stars can slow down. And I think when you look at this Kings team, you talk about how good the skaters are. The weakness with this team lies in their goaltending, and I think this is where the Dallas Stars can potentially take advantage of this team and find a way to snag two points out of this game. Right now on this Kings team, you have two goaltenders, Jonathan Quick, who is two and 2-4 uh, with a 3-8-1 goals against average and 8-7-8 save percentage, and those numbers will likely look a little bit different when you're hearing this. He is the starter in St. Louis on Monday night, so that leads me and many others to believe that Cal Peterson will be the starter in Dallas on Tuesday evening. Cal Peterson, as of right now, 3-1 and one with a 4-10 goals against average and an 8-6-5 save percentage. So neither guy off to a very good start this season, yet the Kings are one of the best offensive teams in the league. And that is really where they've earned a lot of their wins. It's just been them getting into shootouts with their competition and being able to you know, will themselves to win because of the amount of goals that they can score. But really the weakness and the kryptonite of this team lies in the crease. Both Quick and Peterson not really living up to the high expectations this season. And I think that that's something that the Stars can very much take advantage of. Although the Kings could be looking at the star situation and say the exact same thing with the Stars playing their backup goaltender in Wedgwood. I think that there's potential that there could be a lot of goals scored in this game. I think Wedgwood can hold his own and do pretty well, but it just feels inevitable that there's going to be a few goals that he does give up, but hopefully the Stars' defense can rally around him. Miro Haskinen is going to be back, allegedly. But I think the Stars can also, with their offensive firepower, find a way to take advantage of who I believe will be the starting goaltender, Cal Peterson. But even if Jonathan Quick plays, uh, which I'm not sure why he would, that'd be even more advantage for the Stars, a guy who just played the previous night in St. Louis. But regardless of who plays, the Stars should be pretty excited uh, to go against guys that are struggling to start the season in the Stars offense that has been playing pretty well for the most part, especially at home. The Stars find ways to score goals pretty effectively uh, at home so far this season. So this should be a decently favorable matchup for them. Uh, Really, the only negative you can look at the Stars right now is they don't have Jake Gottinger, but I think they have enough pieces as well to at least compete with this Kings team. I think this will be a very interesting game. Well, we'll talk more about this game and the implications and the keys to the game, what it will take for the Stars to win. But first, we're going to take one more quick break. All right, let's continue talking about tonight's matchup. Dallas Stars hosting 
the Los Angeles Kings. And the biggest story going into this game outside of the absence of Jake Ottinger is the alleged return of Miro Heiskanen. Uh, he skated yesterday with the Stars at practice with Yanni Hockenpah. Seems like he will be back in the fold for the Stars, which is massive news. That is great to hear. Hopefully he's fully healed, fully rested from whatever his upper body injury was. Always a good sign when number four is out there on the ice for the Dallas Stars, and that will help somewhat with the absence of Jake Ottinger. I think the, the defensive core is better with Miro out there on the ice, so I'm excited to see him back in action and excited to see a fully healthy defensive unit for this star squad that can hopefully try to shut down and slow down this explosive Los Angeles Kings offense. And the stars in general, uh, both on defense and on the offensive side of the ice, just need to play a good clean game. Regardless of the score, regardless of the outcome, the Stars need to play as clean of a game as possible. They need to avoid penalties, which it, I mean, you you know that they're going to give up at least one or two, but hopefully that's really all it is. Hopefully no more than, than five penalties. If it's below five penalties for the Stars, I will consider that a success. Uh, and even if the Stars do give up a lot of penalties, which I don't want them to at all because that's playing with fire, it's dangerous, and you really don't want to do that with a backup goaltender in net. But something to take note of is the Kings have not been good on the power play this season. Despite them you know, being a top five team in goals four, they are a bottom 10 team in power play right now as far as percentage. Uh, they were 22nd right before I started recording this, a team that has not been very effective when they've been on the man advantage. And, you know, the Stars haven't been great themselves. They've dropped quite a bit. They're only hitting about 20% on their power plays right now. But the Stars, it would be beneficial if they could find ways to draw penalties and go on the man advantage. I feel like that that's something that they're very streaky at. There's some games where it feels like they're on the power play a lot and some games where it feels like they're not on the power play as much. And we've talked about guys like Ty Delandria who are good at drawing penalties. The stars need to find ways to go on the power play and look to find ways to really get that unit going. And I think with the return of Miro Haskinen, there's a great opportunity for that. I think the fact that they're playing a team that's coming off of a, you know, first game of a back-to-back -back, potential backup goalie and net, the, the opportunity is wide open for the Stars to have a great game offensively, both on the five on five, but also on the power play as well. And I'm really excited to see how this team plays. I imagine they're going to be fired up, maybe a little bit angry about how things went on Saturday and also looking to, you know, rally around Scott Wedgwood and get some wins for Jake while he's out rehabbing whatever this lower body injury is. I think they're going to come out and play hard. They understand the importance of needing to get this win. They need to get two points before they hit the road because this will not be an easy road trip, especially down one of your best pieces in Jake Ottinger. Uh, again, I think that they can handle themselves well in Arizona. I think even in Winnipeg, they can find ways to play hard and play competitive, but that Edmonton game scares me quite a bit. Uh, I think it'll be interesting, but I also could see that game going heavily in favor of the Oilers based on how they've played to start the season. But this is a huge game for the Stars. Two points here would go a long way for their confidence and just go a long way for them in general as they then you know, play away from home for the next three games. But this, this should be a fun game, should be a fun matchup. The Kings have a ton of fun, dazzling players to watch, but the Stars do as well. I expect the top line to be doing their thing. I hope we can see a connection, at least one connection between Tyler Sagan and Mason Marchment. Maybe we'll see Yoel Kiviranta get back on the board. Maybe we'll see Denis Gurionov's first goal of the season. Many will remember he scored the thrilling overtime game winner at home against the Kings last season at the American Airlines Center home opener. So maybe just playing the Kings early in the year as well. Dennis needs to get going. Tons of excitement going into this game, despite the Stars being down one of their best players. I'm hopeful that they can come out and get the win, and I think that Dennis Gurionov will get the goal scoring started for the Stars. He needs it, and the team needs it. The team will be better if he can get his offense rolling. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you so much again for tuning in and for making us your first listen of the day. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, to hit that subscribe button. Help us reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. You can also find and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. And you can follow us on social media at Locked on Stars on both Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore. Lewis, but be sure to be tune, tuning in tomorrow uh, as we'll be recapping and reacting to Tuesday night's game against the Kings and be looking ahead to what the future has for this Stars team as they go on a three-game 
road trip. Well, I hope you guys enjoy your Tuesday. If you're going to the game, have fun, be loud, wear green. You guys know the drill. I expect the building to be rocking in full support of the Stars team and Scott Wedgwood as they look for two massive points against the Kings. But I hope you guys enjoy your Tuesday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.